Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video and welcome back to the finale of our F1 1998 career mode. Yes, we're back this weekend here at the Autodromo Jose Carlos Pache for the Brazilian Grand Prix. And as you can probably tell by the title, we have got a three-way title fight that will all be decided today. Yes, Eddie Irvine still leads the way, 12 points clear of Mika Hakkinen and 22 points ahead of David Coulthard as we head into this final race there. Ferrari need a bit of a miracle in the constructors. They are trailing McLaren by 19 points, but we've seen throughout this season how easy it is for drivers to just have one small accident that will ruin an afternoon. So really, it is still anybody's guess as we head into this finale who is going to walk away as world champion. We've still got our own little fight. We could still finish P6 in the Drivers' Championship. Uh, we could also still be out potentially Stewart and Sauber, uh, but I think we need a bit of a miracle if we wanted to do that. But fingers crossed we can finish the season on a high. After this race, we're probably going to take a few weeks off uh, before we dive in with the F1 1999 career mode. But boy, oh boy, am I excited to go one last time. Well, here we are then, returning to what has been a Formula 1 staple for so many years, and I think always should host a championship decider. Anything can happen here at Interlagos. And it normally does, but this weekend, one of three drivers will be crowned Formula 1 World Champion. I believe at this point, it would have been the second time ever there was a three-way title decider going into the last race. I think after 1985 or 84, I want to say. I remember Nigel Mansell getting that puncture uh, in his Williams car, but... Yeah, as we start our qualifying lap, though, ultimately, again, obviously, I'm not expecting our qualifying pace uh, to be anything to write home about. Will Michael Schumacher, though, play the team game? It's pretty simple. Freddie Irvine, he basically just needs a podium here, um, which, well, with McLaren and Ferrari being so far ahead of everyone else still, should more than be possible, unless he gets wrapped up in a, you know, contact or something like that. So a little bit wide there, down in towards the final couple of corners. But yeah, Schumacher, you wonder whether he and Ferrari, you know, there was there was always speculation in 1999 um, that Irvine was cost the world championship, so Schumi would be their first world champion. But he's taken pole here today. We'll line up P15 then. That's pretty much as much as we can expect from qualifying. Well, there we go then. Michael Schumacher does take pole position. Three tenths clear of David Coulthard, who has to win this race to have any chance at the World Championship. Mika Hakkinen, a little bit more complicated for him. It'll depend on where his other rivals are by the end of the afternoon. But P15 for us, comfortably ahead of the rest of the backmarkers. But an eight tenth gap to Jan Magnussen in front. We might be a little bit lonely come race day Sunday. Quickly though, before we get into this video, I want to thank all of the names you see on your screen. Without their continued support of the channel, none of the work we do here would be possible. And if you want to get your name featured on this list, you can click the join button or click the Patreon link down in my description below and support the channel from just £1 a month. You will also get access to weekly updates about everything going on behind the scenes and also occasionally some early pre reviews on videos so yeah a massive thank you to my youtube members and my patreon supporters and let's get back to the video <laughs> Formula One returns to Sao Paulo once again with the stage set for what promises to be another classic Brazilian Grand Prix. Sebastian Vettel famously clinched his third championship here in 2012. And in 2016, Max Verstappen treated us to one of the finest wet weather drives of all time. It's an unusual anti-clockwise race here at Interlagos, where the Sao Paulo locals are packed into the grandstands at each of the 15 corners around this classic 2.7 mile circuit. Two very fast sections bookend the famous and highly technical Sector 2, where getting a good run out of Jun Sao into one of the two DRS zones will be the key to any overtaking prospects today. 
And so, for one final time this season, Anthony Davidson joins me in the commentary box. Well, the winter break is looming once again. No doubt many of those teams already have their eyes firmly on next season. But there's still work to be done here. Still championship positions to decide, which can make a big difference to the prize money. So no one's going to be taking their foot off the throttle just yet. Yeah, I don't feel like we're under too much pressure today. Kind of happy with the way we've gone this season. Uh, and obviously, we'd love to try and make sure that we finish inside the top 10 overall. But most of the focus is going to be on the front runners. We've, we've just had a very, very good campaign in our Arrows car. Certainly have delivered above expectations. And of course, uh, I'm happy to confirm we won't be staying with Arrows next season. Uh, but you'll have to wait and see as to where we are going to be going. But yeah, we're going to opt to start on the mediums and then probably take the softs to the end. Uh, just because the tyre wear is quite low still around pretty much every track this season. But let's do this thing then one final time here in 1998 it is five red lights a mighty long hole but it is lights out and away we go there struggling with a little bit of wheel spin off the start as you would expect we're going to probably drop some places whoa down in towards turn one but we'll just try and hold it firm on the apex through the first corner there whoa there's a lot of constantina run up just in front of us i heard some contact around the venue as well but it looks like everyone uh, has made it through clean and tidy there is Jos Verstappen trying to have a look to my outside down the hill I've got no worries in trying to force him out uh, in towards the Esquiro de Lago there as we make our way through to show I think one of the it must be David Coulthard has moved to the front of the field then so he's done everything he needed to at the start of the Grand Prix Schumacher down to P2 so I believe both McLarens have gained a place both four hours have lost one off the start as yellow flags flashed up for just one second but looks like again we've all made it clean and tidy i'm sure everyone really really obviously wants to finish the final race of the season um but whether that'll happen or not is a very very different question the sign tower frentzen oh we try to have a look to the inside and frentzen says no you don't <laughs> we just got absolutely shown the door there as nakano della rosa and i'm gonna guess shinji nakano are all way down a bit further back for some reason. Um, but yeah, we have been shuffled back then off the start. And Heinz Hal Frentzen very much kind of putting me in my place, I suppose. Well, we've definitely got the pace over the other back markers behind us here as we set a 164. I'm sure both Ferrari and McLaren are very, very nervous when you look to the skies above. It is looking mighty overcast around this venue but yeah we've got to try and close in on Jos and Mark in front of me well you know always got to try and look at the silver linings and things and well that mistake on lap one with the Williams has allowed me just to get a few laps under my belt let me just learn what the car is fully capable of on race fuel I ain't gonna miss this 1998 car I don't know uh, whether the 1999 car handles similarly I assume, of course, it will change around, obviously, when we get, like, the cars with traction control and things like that. Um, but, yeah, this thing is an absolute weapon. Uh, it's so scary to drive, but so rewarding when you get hooked up. As Pedro de la Rosa's already pit, then. He's gone to soft. Surely he's not going to the end. Well, like most weekends this year, then the Arrows car's been really, really good through the corners. But we've lacked straight line speed against most of our competitors here. Mark Genet... See, pulls away a little bit down that start finish straight as we're almost at one quarter distance already this afternoon. Already this race going by pretty quick. Um, but we need to try and find a way around him soon as those first couple of corners, the Senate S here, is so scary and lacks so much grip. Just see through these few corners. Yeah, Mark Genet there. Just struggling a little bit. Oh, with the balance of his car, so am I though behind. As you can see, we're just more much braver in trying to open up the track with though as Genet again struggles to put the power down whoa out of the final corner I'll accidentally get to the inside of him there but yeah that Minardi certainly has got much more straight line speed than our Arrows car at this stage of the day so this might make overtaking very very difficult here we're gonna have to try and do it through the twisty stuff I fear yeah these are the corners where Genet is just so much slower this Arrows so much more downforce and some of our competitors. Can we find a way past him though? Down the inside will go. Great. Virtual I'm so sorry. Car, virtual safety car. Reduce speed immediately and keep a positive delta. 
Well, I've just taken Mark today out of the Grand Prix, but maybe he should have spotted me. I'm not, I'm not sure if I can claim innocence on that one. Let me know uh, down in the comments below. But Genet, he's our first casualty of the afternoon. Well, one of the storylines throughout this season, of course, has been the ever-unfolding chaos um, that has ensued right the way throughout. It's down the inside of Yoss Verstappen. will go. And a big diving manoeuvre there down at Turn 1. We'll promote us back into P15. I really hope that isn't all we're going to be able to achieve today. I'm hoping we've got a little bit more pace to potentially battle with some of the midfielders. We'd love to score a point to finish off the campaign. As Verstappen tried again to have a look around the outside of me. But not going to happen there. Well, we can afford to go aggressive with the strategy today, but looking at the gaps to Jan Magnussen and Heinz Howard Frenzen up the road, um, uh, um, yeah, unless we get a safety car, I think we are very much in no man's land, which would be a very, very depressing way to finish this season. But any of you that have been around here a long time will know that I don't script races, we don't try and do anything uh, to make races more exciting. If we get a boring race, we get a bit of a boring race, I'm afraid. Um, not about... You know, when we have a three-way title fight at the end of the year, it is purely through the AI's doing. I've got no kind of say on that, unless, of course, I'm part of that fight. Hill and Barrichello, though, into the pit lane then, so that's slightly earlier uh, than perhaps we were expecting by the AI. Uh, they are all going to hard tyres then, so they've gone from the softs rather interestingly. We're setting very, very consistent times. It's just a shame they're not particularly quick at the moment, as we might have to get to battle some cars on pit exit. There is Jean Alesi returning to the venue. And I believe, yeah, 1997 world champion Jacques Villeneuve. Of course, yeah, after today, he will no longer be the reigning Formula 1, or sorry, the current Formula 1 world champion. Well, my plan this afternoon is basically go as far as possible until we hopefully see a safety car. At some point, as we can see a Lacey whoa, and Jack Villeneuve side by side just up the road. That's one way we could end up with a safety car today, but looks like they've navigated each other as Alex Wurtz comes out behind them. They're still side by side temporarily. It's a good little battle to try and get ourselves involved in. Oh, Pedro De La Rosa has just pit again then, but he's already a staggering uh, distance behind me in this Grand Prix. I think the AI are going for some very, very odd strategy choices today, which hopefully uh, give us a little bit of a window. We've got Yellows out. I think that's Damon Hill breaking down. As you can see, Rubens Barrichello, though, is going to storm to my inside. Rubens making it through there. But, yeah, Damon Hill, I believe, is out of the Grand Prix. I'm going to guess it's been a nice engine failure for the Jordan. Well, have a look, then, with Damon Hill. Not actually that much smoke, which is a bit of a shame there. But yeah, the Jordan, they've had a pretty tough season. Apparently their car is meant to be very, very strong next year. Uh, but Damon Hill is going to be our second retirement of the day. Full course caution. The safety car is out. Keep an eye on the Delta. We need to keep well, it, it positive to avoid a penalty. Slow it down. took forever. Positive delta. A new but, strategy is come on, let me talk. EMFD. Well, it took forever, but we have got a safety car then in this Grand Prix. So that's worked out beautifully for us by trying to go longer this afternoon. I don't think it's really going to gain me many places over anyone else. But Damon Hill has suddenly made this race quite entertaining for the rest of us. No idea how Jos Verstappen is 40 seconds behind me. I can only guess that some of the AI have already pit maybe twice in this Grand Prix as we make sure we don't get done for pit lane speeding. So I think we're only really under pressure of losing a place to Ricardo Rossi. Um, but surely he is also going to pit under the safety car. Most of the AI go in on mediums. We are going to bolt on a set of the softs to take to the end. And now we have got a chance to try and snoop away a point or two if the pace is there towards the end. You can see Damon Hill's stricken car there on the exit of turn one. Oh, don't hit the wall. <laughs> Really don't want to hit the wall as we leave the pit lane there. But yeah, we're going to restart this thing P14 with about 10 or 12 laps to go. Well, safety car peeling back in then with 13 laps to go. Taking a look at the championship situation. If things were to finish as they are, Eddie Irvine would be world champion. He's only in P4, but David Coulthard is winning. And Mika Hakkinen is only in P3. Because we're going to go green flag racing once again. I think we've got some blue flag traffic. Pedro De La Rosa. Oh, makes contact with Heinz Frentzen there. A little bit of wing 
goes flying off as we'll try and have a look past one of the stewards as well. Maybe our teammate will help us out there as Nakano trying to jump out of the way as well. This has got another safety car written all over it as Nakano and De La Rosa finally let us all by. But we haven't been able to gain anything there. But yeah, that all got very, very scary off the restart. Don't I think it was our teammate's front wing that we saw fly off. I don't think it was Heinz Alfredson's just in front of me. But Kulfar doing everything he needs to at the moment. Irvine, he just needs to see the Ferrari either break down, make a mistake, or just drop down the order. We, however, want to try and make some moves as well. Because I do not want to get a golden opportunity like this. And not at least try to get a bit more out of it. And so we'll make good gains on the Jan Magnussen to the inside. We'll go get in front of the Stewart. And we are finally through and into P13. Next to my early race nemesis, Heinz Howard Frentzen once more. However, Magnussen, he, he's going to fly back past me. It's pretty obvious. Uh, look at that Stewart car there. Very, very quick in a straight line. Uh, and nothing we could really do apart from this. Dive it to the inside of him. And we'll hang on to that place for now. And we'll again let the Stuart go to the outside of me. And again, he'll fly back past me. What is the point in defending when the AI have got that much extra straight line speed? Oh, Magnuson, big wobble. We'll go round the outside through Ferragura there. That was bizarre, but we'll take it. Somehow didn't lose a wheel in the process. So I think someone at the road struggling. I think... No, that's uh, Jack Villeneuve, isn't it? Not Eddie Irvine. I was going to say, how dramatic would that be towards the end of this race? Oh, Magnussen, come on. Just let me have it, please, mate. Just every time flies back past me there. Big lock up down at the bottom of the hill. Big wobble on the exit of the corner as well. But despite that, the Stewart car is so fast in a straight line. I mean, I think it's just these arrows. He's a bit of a dog, as that is not the line at the top of the hill. Don't spin, don't spin, don't spin. And we'll gather it up in the end. Our oh, Jacques Villeneuve has been given us a golden opportunity to try and claim a little bit more this afternoon. He is hosting an almighty train towards the end of this one. But simply put, yeah, at the moment, we just do not have the pace here to match the AI in front. We're reliably a bit quicker through the twisty bit. Yeah, down the straights, we are just dropping time. Well, I think this has really been the story of the season, hasn't it, for us? Look at that, six seconds ahead of Jos Verstappen behind me. We have got so much extra pace over the other back markers, but just desperately trying to hang on to the coattails of the midfield runners. And sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. There is a big wobble through the first couple of corners. They are starting to get the elbows out with each other a bit more which is good for me. The gaps are starting to go the right way again, but time is running out. Okay, the safety oh, car what? Is out. The safety car is out. We need to form up at a reduced pace. Keep a close eye on that delta time and make sure to keep it positive. Well, we've got another safety car then late on in the day. Nothing seems to have happened, but yeah, what on earth is that about? Suddenly, we've been given a little bit of a reset here, but I'm not sure that's going to help me out. As the tyres starting to fall off, we were really getting into the groove again. Oh, imagine if one of the top four had pit late on in the day. Imagine if, say, Irvine had boxed. How dramatic that would be. No one has pit, though. It's just going to regroup the rest of the field again. But has this championship got one final twist in it? Very, very quick safety car turnaround. And we are going to have two laps left then of the F1 1998 World Championship here. Top four. Still exactly as they were a couple of laps ago. But can we this time around try and time the run? We've got two laps to try and get ourselves up into the points towards the end of this one. As, oh, Magnussen. He went left and he went right there. So we'll get down the inside. Pretty much in a move to try and avoid running into the back of him through the first couple of quarters there. Looks like Jos Verstappen has found a way through as well as we run wide out of the center. So I had to try and keep the foot in it. As we plunge down the hill, though, is there going to be any more dramatics towards the end of this race? We can see Rubens Barrichello struggling as well there, with I think one of the Saubers directly behind him and the remaining Jordan of around Schumacher here. I think, I think, yeah, that's still the McLaren at the front of the field there, but Coulthard is trying to apply pressure to Michael Schumacher, and Eddie Irvine surely has just got to sit back and watch the show unfold at the... No!
I thought we'd lost the game then, but no, it hadn't crashed. Luckily, as we'll try and have a look to the inside of Frinson. Similar move to what we attempted on lap one. This time around, there's no contact between us. But surely he's going to have the straight line speed. Matt Williams, as we make our way up towards the start-finish line. Then one lap to go, not only of this race, but also of this season. And I don't think we're going to score points here unless something even crazier unfolds on the final lap of this GP. Top four kind of all spread out once again. So is this Eddie Irvine's final lap before he becomes Formula One world champion and retires from the sport here? What a way to go out for Eddie Irvine, who, well, Ferrari this year, they haven't had the pace of McLaren, but they've certainly been a lot more consistent and more reliable as well for David Coulthard and Mika Hakkinen. Reliability has dogged them throughout the entirety of this championship. That's not to say Ferrari have been perfect either. But as we round our way around this final lap, we always knew it would be McLaren versus Ferrari. But I don't think any of us had our money on it being Eddie Irvine at the start of the season here. It's all over the back of Heintal Frentzen once again. Can we try and make a move on the Williams driver in towards the final couple of corners of the Grand Prix? We can see Prattley pushing him along. We'll get down the inside, though. Don't allow him to switch us this time around. Out of the final corners, Eddie Irvine is your Formula 1 1998 world champion. But as we make our way out of the final corner, Heinz Alfreds is going for it. And he will just pit me towards the line. And so the celebrations begin, and well earned they are indeed. It may have looked simple at times, but as any racing driver will tell you, competing at this level, at the very top, is anything but simple. There's no catching them now then. We have a new World Drivers' Champion. Victory today then, but bittersweet emotions I'm sure, as the championship slips through their fingers. Even so, what a fantastic final race of the season this was. So Anthony, what made the difference out there today? Well, the safety car completely changed the race, didn't it? It's hard to say exactly what would have happened without it, but there's no question that they came out of that situation in a good position. Well, there we go then. Despite McLaren's best efforts in the final race of the year, despite the fact Michael Schumacher as well clearly didn't want to play second fiddle to his teammate, Eddie Irvine is your world champion there. David Coulthard, though, I believe he'll finish second uh, by virtue of the bonus point on this very final race weekend. But yeah, top five pretty much in the race, similar to their overall championship finishing order as well there. P13 for us, rather depressingly, I think is one of the worst results we've had all year. Um, but in a race that didn't see much attrition, we really couldn't do a lot more there. Able to beat out Jan Magnussen and the rest of the backmarkers there as well, of course, with Damon Hill and the Genet not seeing the checkered flag. But taking a look then at our final standings, nine points covering the top three when all is said and done. But is Ferrari on top this weekend? And Eddie Irvine is the first Ferrari world champion since Jody Schechter back in 1979 there. Alex Wurtz jumps Damon Hill in at the final standings in the end. So just about, um, yeah, Alex Wurtz there got a bit lucky with Damon Hill's mechanical failure. No other movers, though, in the Drivers' Championship, obviously, apart from those McLarens. And, yeah, McLaren as well. Uh, jump Ferrari in the constructors. Unfortunately for us, Stewart just getting enough points in the end to... I mean, P8 for us is really disappointing um, when you kind of think that's where we were always expected to be uh, but how much more we deserved by the end of the year there. Williams beat out Jordan by just two points of Benetton in a comfortable P3 there at the end of the season. But like I mentioned in the intro, uh, before we get into the 1999 career mode, I'm going to take a little bit of time away, um, of course, just... Focus on a couple of other series, you know, my team and the F1 Championship Edition career mode as well. But we will be back very soon with the start of 1999. Like I said, we're not going to be staying with Arrows. We are going to be joining another team, which hopefully is going to be exciting. But yeah, thank you all so much for the continued support. And we'll be back very, very soon. <laughs>